I'll start with artist series. So a few times each semester, there would be something called artist series. Like they would showcase concerts and plays, stuff like that. Depending on your taste, the artist series can be hit or miss, but I remember loving, I remember loving Living Gallery every single time. I was always so blessed with Living Gallery, but I also loved the Shakespeare plays. And not everybody liked them, but I did. I don't think I was allowed to do this, but I would sit in the balcony, look at my phone, and read the modern English versions to understand what was going on. And on top of that, like, all of the fun that happened in the balcony during the artist series. I kid you not, like, one time, um, I forget who I was going to be in a group with. I don't think things worked out, but I just ended up, um deciding, hey, I don't want to be down here. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the balcony with a few other people that I know. So I had my paper out, but I didn't show them where I signed up for my initial seat. So I pretty much sneaked into the balcony when I didn't even request to be up in the balcony. Another thing about artist series, they didn't really like you talking during the performance. Even if you were talking about the performance because again I am from public school we're always talking no matter the occasion so one time um, some faculty member approached me and a friend I was with and there were like a few of my friends behind us and he asked are you guys the one who are talking I knew for sure that I was whispering and that my friend beside me was whispering and I didn't even hear my friends in the back even talking that loud so I was like thinking to myself like there's no way he heard us from all the way over there to like back here because I was assuming like maybe he's just talking about the group that's like on the left side of us because he was sitting on that area so I just I just answer as I answer as honest as I can I'm like um I I'm like telling him I don't think we're the people that you're talking about then he's like okay then just walks off but the usher who, you know, saw this, like the ushers are really the ones who really had to keep under everything under control. Um, she comes up towards us and she just lets us know that we're okay and that it's their job to really <laughs> keep things under control. So um, there were times when artist series was on a Wednesday night and I usually attended churches on Wednesday night. So I didn't really like that we had to go to artist series. On Wednesday nights. Like, what type of Christian school? Like, how are you gonna give me the merits if I want to go to church on Wednesday night and not want to go to art series? But hey, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have taken the merits. You know, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. But one thing about art series was that you wanted to, quote unquote, or people made it seem like you needed to go with someone like your specialist specifically, especially in artist series date. Throughout my time there, I never had a specific quote unquote date. That's why I never asked any of my guy friends because it just seemed weird because people would always mention the one person that they're going with as a date. It's like, no, I'm not asking any of my guy friends. Unless, no, no, no. I, again, I would just go in groups. I would just go in groups for most of the time. So, um, actually the last artist series, which was Christmas themed, I thought I was going to be by myself, which I wouldn't have minded, and I'll explain that later on. But this nice group of people I was beginning to know invited me to go with them, so I accepted. And as for Bible Conference, I enjoyed it. I even got a picture with Ken Ham one time. I believe that before I attended BJU, Bible Conference was pretty much the spring break, but when I arrived there, we had both Bible Conference and Spring Break. But you know, of course with Bible Conference for most of the week, we would have no classes. So all the speakers might not have been that great, but I believe that you can still grow and learn from a quote unquote lackluster message because Bible Conference was pretty much meant to be a revival service for the student body. So it was something that I really wanted to take advantage of. It was also open seating, but if you showed up really early, they would try to make you sit in the front. 
Like, how is that open seating? Because open seating to me means I can openly seat my black behind wherever I wanted to. So first come, first serve. Like, I'm trying to go ahead and put me in the front. So sadly, I did hear about people skipping services during Bible conference, which disappointed me to hear. It is their choice. I wasn't a snitch or a bur or a boge, stupid word. Of course, they were big, you know, the school was big on not using your phones during Bible conference. I remember one time I see this guy like several rows in front of me. He's on his phone and there's this woman behind him, like the row behind him. She taps his shoulder and like once he turns around, she just shakes her head like, I thought that was so funny. So I saw a friend of mine sitting next to me and they're on their phone. I tap their shoulder. I'm like, and I explained to them what I saw just a few minutes before. Another crazy thing that happened during one of the services was that there was like a bird flying around inside of the FMA. Because for some reason, they wanted to go ahead and leave the door open, but it's like, I don't know why. But, um, yeah, that bird was flying around, being distracting. It flew, it literally flew, like, right above my head, like, at this level. Like, I literally had it done. Another weird thing was that there would be this older man who was a former BJU student protesting outside of the campus because of how the campus had changed, I think. Um, I know in my last Bible conference, and I don't know how I didn't pay attention to this before, maybe because I never really paid attention to call meetings. And also I never really paid attention to the emails either, but we would wear um, class attire. We could wear class attire in the morning services and suits were required in the night service. So most of the week, I believe, that, yeah, there had to have been three services for most of the week, Monday, afternoon, and nighttime. Because in previous years, like the guys had to wear suits all day but my last bible conference i would wear i would wear my class attire and put a suit and tie around my neck and i did the same thing for artist series in my later semesters like honestly like i for me i didn't have time to just go ahead and like change when i could have just really found a way around that because time was precious to me so I'm sure that like there was this one usher who really caught this and I kid you not, I think I saw an usher <laughs> shake his head at me <laughs> as he let me in because he noticed that I wore a polo shirt under my suit. Praise God, it was also usually nice weather during Bible conference. And again, classes were closed for most of the week. And you know, Bible conference was pretty great, except for one time. The speaker spoke about Hosea, the prophet Hosea, and his wife, Gomer. He mentioned the lady's name seven times. He saying, Gomer represented the failure of Israel. Gomer was a harlot. Gomer was selfish. Gomer was a faith messiah. Yes, we understand that Hosea's wife shared my name. You didn't have to say her name seven times. Throughout the whole message, the group I was with in the same row, they were dying. I'm here hiding my face as he's like saying my name and I felt like the whole campus was just looking at me during that whole message. I'm like, listen, I understand, you know, when you preach at somebody, you, you have to make sure that you make the person feel that they're preaching right at you. But it's like, listen, this is a way, we'll get away, way too personal here. You could have just said Gomer's name two times, twice and like ha would have been done with it. But no, he had to say Gomer Zane like seven to ten times. I have never been so relieved for a message to be over so quickly because as he's praying, he says, please help us not to be like Gomer. And my row just loses it. There were other events on campus like, you know, homecoming, the alumni would arrive for reunions, soccer games. There'll be many activities. I think U Day was one of them. Like, I had a picture drawn of me in, like, a cartoon style, and I still have it in my room, but, you know, as you can see, my lighting ain't really on point like that, so. The thing about me in high school, I never had school spirit, so that wasn't about to change when I uh, attended BJU. So freshman year, I went to the pep rally, and, I mean, it was okay. 
the following year because of the group I was with it was funny because during the pep rally you know you had freshmen sophomore juniors and seniors divided in you know all these different teams so me as a sophomore me and the group that we're with we went on the freshman side so one of the I guess the hype people um I, I think I see that they have some sort of snack so I'm asking her oh like can I get one she's like are you even a freshman and I'm like uh no so overall I didn't get the snack so if school spirit is your thing then I say go ahead for it but no it ain't for me pep rally in my junior year i just remember being bored and honestly like i'm so thankful that me and this cool friend beside me now one time at a soccer game in regards to school spirit my school spirit wasn't genuine um i was shouting and pretending like i was cheering for the bruins and I was trying to go ahead and do the whole, give me a B, give me an R, give me a U, give me an I, all that stuff. And then as I'm doing this, some guy walks past us saying, I don't think you guys are spelling it right. Clearly, I couldn't get mad because I actually thought that was really funny. But there were also things like Bruin Days and Turkey Ball, which had the different societies win some soccer trophies. I think I only remember going to one full game because the other years it's just too cold i'm like listen um i'm gonna go ahead and get my behind in my heated dorm room and not suffer from pneumonia sitting out here cheering for a society that i all right i was a spectator even during brewing days i thought to myself i don't do teamwork you had these blue green red yellow teams i was like no no, no. I, don't, I don't do no team they even had a campus wide tag game Definitely not for me because here's the thing. I'm already stressed out enough. I don't need to be stressed out even more about some weirdo chasing me or trying to find me. I really enjoyed the Christmas festivities that the campus had. I had never been to a tree lighting ceremony. So at BJU, it was my first tree lighting ceremony and I really appreciated it. And that was something I went to every single year. Now as for the leadership, like I mentioned, Bob Jones Sr. founded the school, so after he passed, Junior was in charge, then Bob the Third was in charge. So since he was the third, people call him Triple Six. Triple Six, like, are y'all 12? Like, Dr. Bob, calling him Dr. Bob seemed fine to me. His mama called him Bob, I'ma call him Bob. Again, he did preach chapel from time to time, and there were mixed reviews of his preaching style. Um, I don't really have much to say about it. I mean, I don't think he was an awful speaker and I mean I do appreciate this is something I'll always appreciate from Dr. Bob's sermons. It was pretty much like an encouragement to the student body to minister to the world and I'm really hoping that I can really get the gist of this quote right. Almost like it's a sad thought to remember that we live in a world where souls are dying and going to hell today. Now if you're watching this and you're not a Christian and you're like whoa 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 stay away from me Westboro Baptist Church. Listen, like, there is hope. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He offers a simple gift. Repent of your sins and trust in Jesus Christ alone to save you because he will. Back to the Jones family, I did take a picture with him, and he seemed like a very sweet man. And I did take a picture with his wife, his first wife, the late Mrs. Jones, who seemed like a very sweet lady. And a couple of my friends, when he and Dr. Pettit had a sing-off during, like, the homecoming, um, campus show games they sang disney y'all okay it wasn't a 106 in park freestyle friday even though that would have been really funny as for dr pettit he became president of the school after stephen jones dr bob's son was sick sadly you might be wondering why stephen wasn't named bob well there is a bob the fourth but i've just never seen him before like i think he might be a journalist so he pretty much told Steven, like, you got this, like, I'm a bounce. Back to Dr. Pettit. Now, people even had mixed views of him. Like, when he preached that when we struggle with sin, we should stop it, which is true. So I don't know how someone took the time in their day. I don't know how they had all this time on their hands to write a whole article complaining about Dr. Pettit saying, stop it. He literally complained about Dr. Pettit saying stop it when we sin. 
making Dr. Pettit preach another chapel message clarifying what he said, which I mean, I honestly believe should have been simple. Because obviously, you know, when we sin, obviously, of course, you know what? Hey, our human bodies, our flesh, it, it, is, uh, it is always against the spirit daily. And, you know, that's just when we have to really rely on God to really help us. But you know what? We really have to make that decision. Are we going to go ahead and keep stepping out of what the Bible says and going against God's word? Or are we going to get right with God and be on the right track in our lives? Like, Overall, my time during there, it did seem like the majority of the student body did respect him. He had a respectable personality and we got used to him since he preached in chapel for most of the week. Two quick stories, funny stories, about Dr. Pettin. Story number one. So every story he would have different topics to focus on throughout chapel and he made books on which we discussed in discipleship group. As a joke, since I'm a self-published author, I say to one of my roommates, he didn't read my book, so I ain't gonna read it. There were two students, this is story number two, there were two students I attended church with, and they were town students, and Dr. Pettit would have um, lunch with them. They invited me as someone else we attended church with. I felt like I made a first bad impression because my computer was up on the um, DC table, and but I needed to know, I needed to know the time since my phone stopped working, and I needed to wait until I got my new one, which still isn't the best. After all these years, I need to get an upgrade. Enough about my problems. And I explained that I would stay, I explained to Dr. Pettit that I would like stay for like 20 minutes because I had to go to class. But during like those like 20, I guess 20 to 30 minutes, we did have like a nice conversation and I thank him, you know, for having lunch with us. Before I go on my merry way, I just want to say what I told Dr. Pettit, I literally meant as a joke. I was not serious because I feel like Dr. Pettit felt like this was funny and I thought this was funny. So Dr. Pettit tells me, Gomer, it was nice meeting you. I hope I can remember your name. So as I joke, I'm like, thanks. I hope I can remember your name too. I tell a few friends about this and it's like, I made the worst decision of my life. I even tell my younger brother and a couple of my cousins about this who didn't go to BJU and they're like, why would you say that? And I was like, I was kidding. Like he had to have known I was kidding. A couple of days, he sees me, we say hi to each other. He's like, hi Gomer, it's good to see you. You see, I remember your name. So in my personal opinion, I feel like Dr. Pettit thought I was funny. And because I was funny, he remembered my name. People would often refer to Bob Jones as the bubble, which it did feel like. So there were plenty of opportunities to get off of campus and have fun with your group of friends, like hiking, which I'm not a fan of, and I never took part with any BGU student during my time there. I went hiking about twice in my life, and I was like, nah, like, this ain't for Black people. There was the opportunity to go downtown, which I went every once in a while because, I mean, I didn't have a car. So I went there when what seemed like special occasions because someone would invite me to tag along with them. And it always seemed like the weekends were so dry and empty because it seemed like the majority of campus would be gone. And I'm like, wow, y'all really ain't gonna take me with you. Granted, sometimes I had schoolwork and I really needed to get it done. So I would have to object to going on trips sometimes. So one weird thing was that a friend of mine explains to me this. She's with these few people and someone didn't invite me to go out of campus one time and she asked, how come Gomer can't come? And the reply was that, oh, he's always busy so I decided to stop asking him. Okay, like, ouch, that kind of hurt. I wasn't always busy. I would have still appreciated to have been asked or invited and I didn't have a conversation with this person who I do consider a friend because I didn't want to put my my friend who told me in an uncomfortable position. I'm going to talk about friendships and relationships later on, but please try not to do stuff like that. It might actually hurt somebody's feelings, and as a psychopath myself, I don't allow my feelings to get hurt. I just try not to kill people. Whenever I wanted to spend alone time off campus, I would walk across the big bridge to the Starbucks, not to get anything because coffee is just nasty. And where I would just go to Jack in the Box or Bento Boys, 
which I really wish was around when I was a freshman. One time when I get out of Starbucks and I'm walking back to campus, um, I see these two people who I'm pretty sure were Bob Jones students asking me if I needed a ride. Ha <laughs> ha, no. Um, stranger danger, I didn't know them and I didn't care if they came from BJU or not. Um, I don't get into cars with strangers. I am a true crime YouTuber. I do not get into cars with strangers. You are a watching a true crime YouTube channel. Do not get into car with strangers. What are you doing asking me? Look, if I am not a lost little boy, do not ask me for a ride if you do not know. Don't even ask, you see this is my true crime hat right now. Don't even ask a little child if they need a ride. Wait with them for the police or their parents to come get them home. Nope, I was not trying to get snatched in another state. The South especially. Another thing, if you go out to eat at some place like IHOP or Denny's, tip the servers. I now don't like the idea of sharing the bill, especially when I'm not the one driving. Because the person was like, wait, like we're in the car. They're like, wait, we forgot to pay the tip. In my mind, I'm like, who's we? Because I gave all I had, and I thought the tip would have been handled. I kid you not, like, if memory literally serves me correctly, I was certain that I tried to tell them, like, let's get out of this car and give the waitress the tip. Nope, nope, nope. The driver of the car drove off, and after that, I'm like, nope, I'm not doing these sharing the bills ever again as long as I have breath on this earth. A place outside of campus which truly held a special place in my heart and still does was the church I attended throughout my time. Again, one reason why I picked the school was to find a good church and have transportation to attend there. Also, I was looking for services that align with the version of the Bible I read now. I read from the King James Bible and I know a lot of people at the school didn't read from the King James Bible, but thankfully the chapel did preach from the King James Bible. And I'm, I'm here's the thing, like when you tell people at Bob Jones that you read from the King James Bible, they kind of like think of you like as like a crazy person who, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what they would think, but they just, think they just have like some type of misconception about you. It's like, if you don't read from the King James Bible, I'm not saying that makes you any less spiritual or any less of a Christian because once you're saved, you're saved. I'm just saying that from what I've learned about the translation, it just seems like the most reliable translation from the original Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, you know, original manuscripts. Hey, all right, if, if you if you wanna go ahead and have a whole debate with me, if I have the time, sure, go ahead and just say that all in the comment section if I have time. But I also wanted to go to a church with aligned with um, the days I attend the church back home because I think I mentioned this in the video earlier on. I go, I usually go to church like Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesday nights. And also the other churches around the area, and not to bash any church at all, like it kind of segregated the churches by age. That's not what I'm used to. It's not a church I would ever want to be a part of but if that's what your church does then I wouldn't stop you I'm just the type of guy who just wants to know air by the church I attended ended up providing that and let me tell you they made such a good first impression on me now once again for the hundredth time I'm a social guy I'm not a hundred percent sure if I introduced myself to them when I saw them or if they introduced introduced themselves to me first let's just say we introduce ourselves to each other the, fruit, the few of them, you know, who first introduced themselves, you know, they, they honestly, they welcomed me. They asked where I came from and um, what I was studying BJU for. And they were just amazing individuals because I was serving at a church back home and I was looking for a church home while at school. During those first visits at the church and, you know, with the preaching, which of course came straight from the Bible. The pastor never held back and I never expected him to. I was certain that this was a church that God needed me to attend and grow as a believer. 
during my time as a BJU student, but I wanted to be 100% sure. So I was gonna visit another church, but the van from the other church didn't show up. So following Sunday, since the other van didn't show up, and the church van of the one I already attended did show up, I was like, you know what? There's nothing wrong that I see with this church. They're preaching from the Bible, and the people there are pretty awesome. So I stayed. Since I'm a psychopath, I didn't want to scare these nice people off. So slowly but surely, I got to know everyone who attended the church. And it was a pretty small church, but you know, it, it didn't really seem hard to really get to know everybody. So there were plenty of service opportunities that the church provided and plenty of trips. I went with them, went along with them too. Most of the time when I wasn't on campus, I was at church. Here's the thing about um, church life, from what I saw from with other, with other students at BJU, like I was just pretty much thrown aback at um, how it seemed like a good portion of the students only went to church and Sunday mornings and never went to church services and Sunday evenings and even Wednesday evenings because that's what I was used to. Because again, I went to public school back home and the only um the only I guess lifestyle of a believer that I was familiar with is obviously with my family and with the church attendance and I was just surprised that a good portion of the student body only went to church on Sunday mornings because I mean for me, you know, I know my life's not together, obviously, so that that's why I want, you know, because as a believer, you know, you, you want to grow as a believer, okay? You, you desperately want that spiritual food. You, def you desperately want that spiritual nourishment. And, you know, of course, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to go ahead and put myself at a higher standard than everybody else. Obviously, I am not the perfect role model of what a Christian should be but that really like threw me off guard and i'm not gonna say this about everyone or the majority of the student body you know that's their business but like it really disappointed me how like i heard that certain people just didn't have the time quote unquote to read the bible or to pray like just 24 hours in a day like i don't understand how hard it can be to just spend 10 to 20 minutes in the Bible, reading God's word, speaking God's word, seeking to know him more, and seeking to grow closer to the Lord. And, you know, people, I just hear people say, like, I really want to go ahead and read my Bible, but I just don't have the time. God, I understand that God is outside of time, but he took the time to create this world. He took the time to create you and me. He took the time to have his son pay the price for our sins on the cross. And the least that we can do 
as at least spend time with the God who made plenty of time for us. He asks, are you 22? I'm like, no. And he's like, you have to join the society. When I arrived at BJU, I didn't have a specific friend group and left BJU without a specific friend group, which I'll explain later. If you need help choosing a society, then there would be society rush. Each society has a tent where you can ask questions and learn about each society what it was about. So people were asking me, what are you looking for in a society? Overall, I knew more people in the Rams, so during induction, I joined the Rams. So one thing I didn't appreciate was running, mpakui, okay, and showing all the other freshmen how fat I was. I forget what the game even was, but I literally put my foot on the actual desk, which was kind of, you know, tilty, but I was able to get a couple, I was able to step on a couple of desks in, but on the last final step, let me tell you, all of a sudden I felt busting my butt on the last desk I set foot on. In usual Ram fashion, everybody was like, whoa. So in the words of Donnie McClarkin, we fall down, but we get up. So, I immediately got my butt off the ground like it was nothing. There was this one guy who was in my society who was like, like I'm telling you, like there was something off about him. Like somebody literally asked me like, what is wrong with him? I'm like telling him, honestly, I really don't even know. Um, sometimes I felt like some other Rams like kept egging him on. In my mind, I'm like, y'all do you, but this is not gonna end. Well, 
Like, I'm telling y'all, like, he was to the point where he would, he would headbutt his head hard on the elevator door. Like, I'm here screaming his name to make him stop and, like, to snap out of it. Because I told him I'm not trying to die in the elevator with y'all in the school. And no. And yes, I, I said this out loud. And <sighs> this person will be doing the most. Come to find out, um, he had been involved with, and I can't legally share the specifics on YouTube. Like literally, like I legally can't share it because someone might be in trouble. Like I'm not trying to have BJ YouTube. But he was just involved with some very concerning dark activities. And this child would be throwing desks around during our Rams theme song. Like, I mean, everybody has like a society theme song. And I know the Rams have their theme song. I don't have the energy to sing it. So. One time he threw a desk at another Ram and <sighs> that didn't end well. I was here clutching my pearls and again I was like Lupita and despite how crazy the Rams were they were an overall solid society in a way we kind of made history my freshman roommate from back home even gave me a new office title because the way my GPA was looking I wasn't able to make it as an official society officer so if y'all really did try to vote for me for something like I'm, I'm sorry for wasting your time my GPA said no on the other hand, I really had no desire to be a society officer anyway, so hey, you know what? Blessings come even during your trials. So just for clarification, my roommate from Black Home, Black Home, <laughs> my roommate from Back Home is Black, and I really don't know why he made this title up. Like, I'm honestly gonna have to ask him the next time I see him. But he gave me the title as a magistrate's leader of cultural diversity. I mean, I guess, looking back at it, maybe the title fit me well. Like, everyone voted me in, and I won the office every single time until I had to pass a torch. And sadly, after my roommate graduated, like, I got to know the other only Black person in the Rams, but sadly, he was involved with some illegal activity, so he got kicked out, and I was very, very disappointed. This man left me alone, so it really made sense why I always kept being voted as the magistrate leader of cultural diversity. So as a way to celebrate every end of the semester, I would throw cards, you know, informing the Rams about the the culture, you know. For like example, like the first time I was literally, like, you know, throwing printed papers of Harriet Tubman on the twenty dollar bill like I, I was it was all over the room sorry I didn't do that for like my last two semesters like I honestly didn't have time to do it so I don't know if the Rams are even carrying on with this tradition but if they are then hey you know not to brag or anything but yes I was the first so breaks was something everyone was looking forward to so most of the time during Thanksgiving and spring break I would stay on campus my first year I did go home for Thanksgiving but I decided never to do that again. All that traveling back and forth for such a short amount of time, then, which meant the following years, I kept my butt on the campus, but I had the place to myself until junior year of spring break, my sophomore year roommate, who is an international student, had to stick around. Honestly, I was a brat about the entire thing. I was in love with my week of solitude. So, you know, because it gave me time to refresh and if I got bored or lonely, I would just call a friend on my phone. Plus, sometimes other friends I had would stay on campus, so I would just spend some time with them as well. But when my roommate said he was staying with me for spring break, I was like, no. Looking back on it, it was very selfish. And it was, again, he was an international student. It wasn't like he had a choice. I feel like I gave him such unnecessary bad time about it sophomore roommate if you are watching this that i do want you to know honestly from the bottom of my heart i am so very sorry you did not deserve psycho gomer to be upset with you like that i was being immature and petty the year before that though you know the time I almost the second time i feel like i almost got killed thanksgiving break 
um, a couple from my church invited me to go to their house for Thanksgiving. So when I go back, when they drop me off back to campus, um, hours later, I'm in my bed. We always had like a privacy blanket, you know, covering, you know, the bed. So I hear someone just walking into my room, turning on my lights without knocking. Like at first I'm confused, but later on I'm like concerned. They were in there for like 10 seconds. Like, and then they just walked out. And I just remember like asking somebody else I knew who was still on campus saying like, did you have somebody walk into your room? She's like, um, nope. And listen, me and her were black. So with those type of stuff, people were just asking me, well, how come you didn't, you know, see who it was? Listen, when it comes to those type of situations where you can't even defend yourselves, black people do not investigate. At least not most black people that I know. Because the next day, I asked public safety if it was them. They said it, that it wasn't. So then they told me to ask a faculty member. I asked a faculty member. He said it wasn't him, which means somebody literally broke into my dorm room. I felt like I could have lost my life. Thankfully, they added locks to the doors my last semester because my anxiety went up the roof after that experience. Now, let's pour the tea. I'm going to get the relationships bit out of the way from my personal experience. A romantic relationship was non-existent for me at BJU. First, if a girl did catch my eye, I wasn't able to have a relationship with her because the game of romance is not my strength. Also, I don't really see myself as a romantic, so that also would have probably scared girls off. Also had the huge mistake of having this picture of the perfect woman for me. The thing is, there is no perfect woman and it's wrong for a guy to see any female as someone who should conform to his image. Not only that, but after BJU, I was told how girls really wanted a guy who really had a vision for his life, had things together, and had this leadership quality. I didn't have that quality in BJU and it would have been unfair to her. So I believe that a man should lead and provide for his lady and since I didn't really know what to do with my life, there was no way I would have been able to provide a girl with what she deserved. As for other people's relationships, it was weird coming back different we different years mentioning someone's boyfriend or girlfriend only to find out that they broke up during summer, which only made things awkward. I get that you wouldn't share that on social media, but Psycho Me needs a head up. Also, if you think that two people like each other, don't try to be matchmaker because that just only causes more heartbreak. At BJU, you're also not allowed to kiss, hold hands, or go on a date without a third party, which I understand, I mean, why they have those rules. And I also get why people have an issue with them. So those who had an issue with that rule did not follow them. Like one time I saw this couple in the morning holding pinkies. I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if I just karate chopped this pinky hole? Like to me, it looked ridiculous. Like if you're gonna break the rules in public, break it in confidence. Again, I'm a social guy. I even saw this couple in a car who I recognized and I waved and said hi. If memory serves me correctly, they were caught off guard, but it wasn't like they were kissing. I didn't see them kissing. If they were, I just would have went on my merry way. Another time I was invited to, um, what was that big building next to the den? That big building next to the, or no, what's across from the den? And like you went to go ahead and get your financial aid stuff handled. What was that building called? Anyway, I was in that building and I was invited to play board games with a group of people. I was friends with this one guy, but I didn't know this one girl. Like I knew he was seeing somebody, but like I, I literally forgot how she looked like. Like honestly, like I didn't know that they were an item. So like I see this um, open spot. So I'm like, okay, I'll just sit right here. In the corner of both my eyes, I see them looking at each other, like unsure of what to do. Like I soon realized what I did, but I was just waiting for them to say something because I'm not trying to make this situation more awkward than it already is. So one of them stood up and then sat beside their significant other. Like y'all couldn't tell me to just get my black behind up, like because I wouldn't have minded. At least no, don't tell me to get my black behind up. Just tell me to sit in. Dude, I promise you I wasn't trying to take your girl. Girl, I definitely was not trying to take your man. Another thing is that when people reach junior, senior year, that's when proposals, like marriage proposals, 
popped up. Younger me was always so confused, like, where did y'all get this money to buy this ring? But hey, praise God, most of them worked it out. Yes, most. Something I'm familiar with, um, more familiar with, um, just friendships. So when I arrived at BJU, I only knew those who I attended church with back home, and they were all older than me, and already established friendships. And a couple of years ago, a cousin of mine, you know, was asking me about my time at BJU, and knowing how silly and social I can be, assumed that I had a lot of friends, which I did. But here's the thing, and I really don't want you guys looking at me like a little sad puppy or something, um, but just because I'm good at making friends doesn't make me an expert at forming strong bonds with people, if that makes any sense. For those who know me, again, I truly hope that you're not like punching your pearls. Like, I don't really talk to too many people about this because I don't want to seem like a charity case or someone's experiment to come to my rescue. This video is made to help others, and I'm really hoping that this can help those who might have the same issue as I do. Um, in the physical realm, I'm my own hero as I rely on God alone to help me through the tough times. All right, let me tell you, at BJU, everyone knew me as a smiling guy who was goofy, always saying hi, and just a little bit off. But God got me through some silent struggles. To this day, like, I have such a hard time talking to many people about my deep troubles. Not that there aren't people in my life who I can't talk to. There are. And they know who they are. And y'all are real ones. Maybe not telling those people about my deep struggles is a pride issue, so just pray for me, y'all. I've always relied, well, not always because I wasn't always a Christian, but as I grew as a Christian, I've relied on God alone to help me through those silent struggles. And, you know, arriving at BJU, it seemed like people already secured their friend groups and, you know, I wasn't trying to go ahead and connect and mix with all that. Besides, with the first person I actually met, I made such a bad impression. I am literally just coming out of public school. This guy who I think left early on in the semester anyway, because I don't remember ever seeing him again. We introduced ourselves at the meeting which I thought was only for freshmen. And he asked me if I am a freshman. I look at him because <sighs> this is, again, this is gonna sound wrong. I believed in stupid questions, which I still do, except for those who are under 13 because they don't know any of it. So he asked me if I'm a freshman. I just look at him like, well, mm. he says, yeah, I was just asking because I'm a sophomore and I'm new. So I just wanted to see. After he explained everything, I felt like the biggest jerk in the world, and I hope I was wise enough to apologize, because honestly, like, now that I'm thinking about this, like, my mind literally goes blank after that encounter, because honestly, like, he didn't deserve that. That was my fault. One time, I'm not really gonna say who this is, but somebody told me that I could, in, in my translation of it he told me how much of a big jerk i was even though what i said was a joke but even after years of getting saved i mean hey i'm i'm not gonna lie i could be a pretty crappy person to others and again like when this person was telling me like that I was a jerk like he went off like he went off on me. he was saying that you know the way i was the way that i was being a jerk that I didn't care about him or like this other friend of mine. I'm like, thinking about it now, like I do understand where he was coming from, but honestly, it just wasn't true. I really don't know how to show others that I care. It's not one of my greatest strengths. I know like I sound like a sociopath. I sound socially awkward or an introvert. I mean, I don't think I'm an extrovert. Like I'm pretty in between right now. Like I am praying that God can help me show others that I care and to be genuine genuine with it. So if I did go to school with anyone watching this and it seemed like I just kept pushing it away, I honestly, like, bottom of my heart, I am very sorry. I sure wouldn't want anyone to treat me that way and it just wouldn't be acceptable for me to treat others that way. Plus, I mean, I try to be family oriented 
community-centered guy, so because, you know, I don't pick favorites when it comes to family. I don't do cliques, I don't do squads, um, which seemed like most people on the campus had, and another weird thing that people on campus had, calling people popular, like, ill. like, how in the world are people gonna be popular in college? Like, that's just, no, that's just weird. Thinking people were popular in college, thinking, you know, all these cliques and squads, at least to me, in for my life, for my for my personality, it just seemed immature and ghetto to me. The groups of people I would be around most of the time, but I didn't feel part of a squad. Like more like a guest, and not like a guest star because saying guest star guest star um, seems pretty prideful. So you know, even with those groups, you know, the the drama came in, and it's like we are in college. What is going on? Like the problems came in, the groups fell apart. And you know what? Um, it seemed like nobody was just contacting anymore, contacting any, contacting anybody anymore. Um, and I was just left not being able to make plans with anybody for dinner. So I just went back to being content with um, just being the guy who just befriended anyone I could click. At first, I never made plans with anyone to eat at the PC. I don't know. Like it just seemed weird to me that people didn't want to sit by themselves at the DC. Like if a booth wasn't open, um, because the last time I sat at the table, someone asked me if I wanted to eat with their food. He was a really nice guy, but I did not know them and I didn't want to feel like a lost puppy, so I just kindly declined. So if I just decided that, you know, if I saw that no booths were open, I would just get a to-go box and eat in my dorm. But if I found friends at the PC, I would ask if I could sit with them. One time, that ended. As you hear the story, like, I don't want you guys thinking that this person is a jerk. Like, they helped me out so much at my time at BJU. Like, he, yeah, he is an overall nice person. But I saw this friend of mine sitting with another friend of mine. And again, I wasn't texting people, making plans to go to eat dinner, I just went to the DC and decided to just talk with whoever I was friends with. Because later on in my years there, when I tried to make plans with people, their schedules just didn't match with mine. And, and you know what, it's, it's college, you know, sadly, your schedules can't match with other people. So I just gave up making plans with people for a time. So I asked these two friends of mine if I can join them. At first, I was told yes until you know i stood up i'm about to go ahead and get my food and he stands up and he finds me and like i was really planning on just having dinner with him only on the outside i'm like okay you know that's cool inside psycho gomer was caught off guard and i thought oh snap all of the other times i did this other people saw me as a burden who ruined their flow which meant that i saw myself as a burden to others. So after that, I did try to start making plans with others. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. So if it didn't, I would just go ahead and sit my, by myself at the DC, which I didn't care about at all. Again, I'm not really trying to sound like I was an outcast. Like I just didn't have a specific close-knit group of friends because when I set up my book release party, like I had two book release parties for like my second book but that's a long story. I was told to just invite my closest friend. And I didn't play favorites when it came to friends at BJU. So I invited those who I thought, and I, I even invited my society, who I guess a good portion of them really thought that I was joking. But I played too much, so I don't really blame them. And some guys from my society actually did come to the book release party. But again, when I was in public school, the friends I made were mostly Black. So when I arrived at BJU, when I started making friends, at least one person was telling me how they don't have black friends at home or around the area. First, in my mind, I'm like, that's really sad. Second, I'm like, okay, like I didn't tell him this in person, but in my mind, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay. And like, what, like, what do you expect me to do? About it? Not only that, and again, like, there was no race issues, there was no race wars at BJU. Before I go any further. I was surprised at how comfortable people were with saying the n-word and either I would say something like letting them know how you know it's really not cool and if you actually step into an area surrounded by black people they 
them gonna stomp on you. Or I would just like look at them some sort of way, like letting them know that they messed up. Like, I mean, to a lot of people, I should have went off on them, but I wasn't gonna have my reputation as the angry black man on campus and allow them to make me give off a bad energy. I'm the type of guy who doesn't really like that word used around me, white or black, like I really don't care. I'm not your n-word and I'll never be. Like I'm 25 now, I really don't understand why people are obsessed with saying that word. Like does it make people's like tongue tingle or something like that? I mean have y'all not read let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth in the words of Dr. Pettit. Stop it. One specific occasion, I went downtown to celebrate a friend's birthday, and she was singing Kanye West Gold Digger, which I'm not a fan of. She was singing the part. She was singing the part, and she's a white girl. She's saying, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke. Fill in the blank. And I respectfully told her I don't like the word used around me. Like, I literally had to tell her more than words, like, knock it off, like, stop. Because we went, again, we went downtown for her birthday party, or for her birthday, to celebrate her birthday. I almost snapped on this girl on her birthday. Almost like the other time, I almost snapped on her when I was on my, on my phone with someone back home during the basketball game. Thankfully, she couldn't snatch my phone out of my hand because it would have ended worse for all of us. Because she was unable to snatch my phone out of my hand, she's like, we're at a game. We should cheer for the team. First, I was exhausted. I regretted going. People were screaming. I was annoyed. I have no school spirit. I needed to get back home from, I needed my friend from back home to calm me down because I was about to snap. Back to the downtown park birthday celebration singing Kanye West. She's like, Oh my word, it's a word. Like, it's my birthday. Like, oh my word, you're getting on my nerves. It's just a word. Y'all, it is not just a word. And I'm not going to use this video to go into a whole history lesson. I mean, you can do that in the comment section. I really should have ended the friendship then and there. But I was thinking, maybe the good outweighs the bad. Nope. You can forgive someone. But when they constantly disrespect you, cut them off. They're no good for you, no how. Since I'm still on topic, during my last um, society induction, my society always wanted me to make some sort of speech since I was magistrate leader of cultural differences. Of course, my speeches were never serious. I didn't care if they asked me to make a speech. Um, the night before at Rush, this guy in my society kept saying, go up there and share a dream, refer referencing the MLK, I have a dream speech. And I'm like, yeah, sure, knowing good and well, I wasn't going to. Then. At induction with our sister society, the Tigers, when I'm making my silly speech as the officer, <clears throat> this idiot literally screams in with our sister society when I'm making my silly speech. Some of them about your dream. <sighs> For a short few seconds, it gets silent. In my mind, I'm like this dummy. Because the previous year, the school was getting more diverse and more black people were coming in. And I was here for it, you know? If I were to be friends with them, I wanted it to be, you know, natural instead of being too forward or forced. And I happened to make a good few friends from those who came. Sadly, during my last semester, I made friends with the new black students naturally, but sadly, a bit late because again, I was about to head out. So not that I didn't have black friends at BJU, I did and they were awesome. Don't get it twisted, all my friends of different colors are awesome. Back to this dummy with the MLK reference. I quickly had to play it off like saying, ah oh, yes, my dream. Um, so let's BJ, it's time to let BJU know that when it comes to the Rams and the Tigers, you know, the sister society, that King Kong ain't got nothing on us. Thinking back at it, I don't think I was like really embarrassed for myself. Like my sister society was very diverse. Like I think it was like the most diverse society in the school. And I didn't want the girls on the sister society to feel a certain way. So um, the next couple of days, this friend of mine from the Tigers talks to me and I apologize. But like she assured me that there was nothing to apologize for and that I surprisingly handled it well. So when I decided to leave, I was willing to become 
this lone wolf who was still very social to people. Thankfully, I had friends who wouldn't allow that to happen, which I truly appreciate. Literally for most of the last semester, I rarely made plans with anybody. Almost like I was back to square one when I was a freshman, which I kind of regret. Like, I really wish I could have taken more time to spend with friends of mine, but what's done is done. I should have taken better care of myself. Please take care of yourself at BJU. Get enough rest, eat breakfast, feel free to exercise. Like I said, I didn't. So feel free to exercise if it helps, because I sure didn't exercise when I was there. Let me explain something to you. Sleep deprivation for years is no joke. To this day, I am still feeling the effects of it now, and it, mo it most likely was the reason why I felt the way I did throughout my time at BJU. Because I didn't get enough sleep, like, the war with my mind, it was just causing all these different mood swings to occur throughout my time at the school. And a few people tried to help me, but I didn't allow myself to accept the help. Please don't make the same mistake that I did. If someone offers you help, please take it. And I don't want to make it sound like I was like depressed or anything or like I was, you know, trying to end my life. You know, God is the author and finisher of my life. I definitely am not. Listen, I, mm -mm, no, no. And if you do feel that way, like, please don't, don't, please don't do it. Like, get help too. But, you know, because I wasn't taking care of myself, I literally felt like they, you know, like when they were offering help, I felt like they weren't being genuine about that. So I'm feeling this way, but of course you don't go off of feelings because they most likely were being genuine. Do I regret going to BJU? No, and yes. No, because by the end of the day, I learned plenty of lessons there. I grew a lot and with being around that environment, that helped to really get me closer to the Lord, but I also wish that I would have known that college really wasn't for me, especially a challenging school like BJU, which will definitely challenge you there. So praise God, I didn't quit and got what I went there for. And I've basically got a small business, a very small business, making money every day with my book sales. So I'm basically using my major for something. And after getting my business associates from BJU, I was trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. And I ended up becoming a massage therapist, which they clearly didn't offer at BJU. But it's a job I love and I praise the Lord for it. Even though I wish massage therapy was an option after high school, which I would have immediately taken, you know, wishing things happened in the past is not going to change the past. So I'm going to praise God for what he allowed and to focus on what he needs me to do for today. Do I recommend this school? If you're a believer and you actually want to go to college and that is not anyone making you go, you have a passion for which the college offers, I say go for it. I don't want the negative experiences to scare you away. We all have different paths in life. Just surround yourself with good people. Make sure you take advantage of the help the teachers have to offer. And most of all, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Time and time again, God has proven to me that his word is true. So that piece of scripture is definitely going to help you succeed there or whatever you do in your life. I definitely thank you all for taking the time here today to watch this video. I think this is the longest video I've ever made in my life. Um, again, if you have any thoughts, questions, memories of BJU or thoughts on this video overall, please leave your thoughts in the comments section. Um, it, again, this is a true crime YouTube channel. So if you actually want to see true crime content, Go ahead and feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If you'd like me to go ahead and cover a specific true crime case, please let me know. I hope to see y'all soon for True Crime Tuesdays, and I hope to talk to y'all later.